Good evening. Aren't you happy that we are back with your favorite program, the University of the West Indies and you? Uh, it is true that last month we did not have our scheduled program because we were very, very active in uh, April where we had our grad recognition of graduate ceremony on the 3rd and then there was a lot of training taking place at the University of the West Indies Open Campus Dominica site and that we fell short of having um, some guests in April. But we're going to make up tonight and for several other months of 2014. I have this program tonight in two parts. That is, we will be speaking and continuing to uh, dwell on continuing professional education, CPE. You've heard about that before. And there are many students who are now probably nodding their heads and saying, look, sir, we did CPE programs with the University of West Indies Open Campus, and we are waiting for our grades. But they have been computed as well as we're checking the attendance because you had to have satisfied some 80% attendance to get a certificate of achievement. But that will be in place, and we'll have a little ceremony for all the students who are listening and viewing at this time. But tonight, two parts, um, we will deal with some CPE programs to come in September to December, that is semester one, and then we will speak about birds. Um, so be glued to your television sets and await your favorite program as it unfurls tonight, um, May the 15th, I think it is. And you, as always, not only will be entertained, but more importantly, you'll be informed of what is going on at the university with you. Let's take a break for sponsors. I'm part of a tough, smart, constantly evolving, never too old to learn community of human beings. Proud of country. Proudly Caribbean, global citizens. With convenient access to over 400 learning programs. Delivered both online and face-to-face. -face. From the Caribbean's University of First Choice. My mind. My life. My world of possibilities is wide open. Call, click, or visit the UWI Open Campus. Yes, we are proposing three possible um, courses or programs for semester one, 2014-2015 academic year. And we have with us someone who's continuing with us and all of you, um, some 84 students who did uh, project management, all confirmed that the tutors, one of them being Irma Lee and Mr. Kurt Vidal did an excellent job. So. Irma is back with us, and as she has been on this program before, so she knows she has to introduce herself. And someone who's brand new, with a brand new program, that is, we will describe it as sustainable agriculture, the lifeblood, you may say, of, the Dom of Dominica. And this by Talifa Loda will tell us about um, sustainable agriculture and what with she as a tutor and others will have to offer come the first semester of the year 2014-2015. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. Good. So let's start with you, um, Irma. Um, so that will sort of soothe the nerves of Talifa Loda. Um, you're an experienced person on this program. Um, introduce yourself, because I can't remember who you are, except that you're a very good tutor. Yes? All right. Um, my name is Irma Lee. I'm actually a certified project management professional. Um, I've had over 20 years experience in terms of managing projects um, from different, you know, sector of um, the business environment, from information technology down to even, you know, television. I actually worked for mapping before. So, um, hi guys. Pretty much my background involves um, from a project management standpoint, um, the structured way of actually making sure that businesses receive value for their money spent on projects that they implement and ensure that it's done on a timely, 
cost-effective manner. So that's what I meant. So there you have it. A lucky find for the University of the West Indies, the partnership we have with um, Irma Lee. Now, um, Talifa Loda, it's your life okay. on television. I am Talitha Loda. I am a research agronomist and um, I've been involved in agriculture for well, a number of years. And um, well, I'm here to present basically a course that, well entitled Sustainable Agriculture. Sustainable Agriculture. Well, before you even yeah. tell us, I, I, I just want you to tell us about yourself and okay. then you will have your turn to tell the Dominican public. And I should tell you that this will be recorded on the University of the West Indies YouTube. Uh, so it will be seen around the world. So you'll tell us about sustainable agriculture. Have you told us everything about yourself? Where were you educated, etc.? Okay, I am a Cuban graduate. Mm -hmm. And um, well, basically, as I said, that I have been involved in agriculture and agriculture is the backbone of our economy. Mm -hmm. As much persons say that tourism is, but mm -hmm. it isn't. And I believe that um, we cannot go wrong. Food is life, and we have to actually educate ourselves in knowing what agriculture is, how to, how to actually um, effect change that is. Mm -hmm. So I believe that um, my background and actually trying to educate others is the way forward. Okay, and so in agriculture, you'll tell us all about sustainable agriculture. Irma, I'm back with you. Um, you have covered a, a course, a certificate course in project management. Yes. But I think we have an offer with you as the lead, um, uh, some aspects of project management which needs a, a further elaboration. Mm -hmm. That is um, schedule, management, cost management, and MS project. Right. Irma, let's hear about this, because there are persons listening, there are persons keen, and I should quickly say, when she's through speaking, that is only 24 persons we would want on that course okay. uh, for a start, because th there's use of the computer right. for MS project, mm -hmm. and we will have the high flyers of the 80 four or so persons who did project management in general. Right. Tell us what is cost management, um, schedule management, and how is it tied up with um, MS project. project? Yes? Okay. Well, we did the certification course in introduction to project management. Mm -hmm. And within project management, we have nine knowledge areas. Two well, of them being defined. cost, mm -hmm. I mean, two of them being cost and schedule management. Those two knowledge areas requires a little bit more intensive um, teaching because there's a lot of formulas, mathematics involved. And with the introduction to project management, obviously there's no way you can cover the, in detail how to go about budgeting, how to go about you know, ensuring that you schedule activities in a timely fashion mm -hmm. and cost effective also um, method. So hence the reason for having additional sessions in cost and schedule management, which is pretty much um, from the project management arena. That's always been those two areas that requires a little bit further in-depth analysis. With that, once you have that underneath your belt, then comes in what we call MS Project, which is actually the tool that you use to actually manage your project. Mm -hmm. So the students who actually took the introduction to, like you said, to the project management, those who did the, the top 24 candidates obviously would look towards taking the cost management, schedule management to get more in-depth um, training as to how, how to go about doing that. And then we would go more into in-depth in terms of using the tool because we really didn't have enough time to do MS project. We had one day and I should say a day and a half and everyone was excited about the tool, mm -hmm. but we needed more time to actually utilize it and see what the benefits are. Okay, so, so just zero in on, we, we, I think it's self-explanatory. Right. Cost management mm -hmm. and budgeting as you mentioned and um, schedule right. management, which involves planning. Mm -hmm. Yes, these are, you may say straightforward, but it involves maths, you said. Yes, and, um, because- I, I know how Dominic can shy away from <laughs> maths. So 
Uh, therein um, lies a little problem. Right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> for instance, for schedule management, you have different methods in terms of how you actually um, schedule your activities. Mm. You're going to have your resources on board. You're going to have a timeline. You have to understand when you have what they call lead time and lag time. You have to understand how you calculate that time period to understand mm. from a project standpoint whether or not you are over yeah, or, or whether you're behind. Yeah, yes. Those calculations are going to assist you in that. Okay. From the cost perspective, um, you have to understand how to do estimating. Every project is different and there's different complexity to them and there's different methods that you use when you're doing costing. Okay. So it's learning what the methods are and then which ones you would apply based on the project that you have. So. Okay, so keep costs and schedule, schedule management on hold. I will return for you to go in detail on MS yes. project, which you said after a day and a half of um, doing this with the current students, they were all excited yes. and they want to do more and it involves use of the computer, it does. which is our life now. So I'll get back to you, Omar, okay. and I, I see you raring to go to tell us about <laughs> MS um, project. But sustainable agriculture, what does that really mean, um, Ms. Uh, Loda? Sustainable agriculture. Aren't we sustaining agriculture in Dominica? My grandparents and great-grandparents and everybody did agriculture. What's the difference now with sustainable agriculture? Sustainable agriculture in, well, you can define sustainable agriculture in three, well, using three words. Mm. That is, one, um, in the ecological sense, the um, other would be social, and the other would be economical. Okay. Now, it's a fact that many persons would believe that the fact that you're producing, mm. that it's sustainable. Mm. However, what is needed is that to look at all the various factors, looking at, for example, your, your, your input levels, looking at your output levels. But then there's an equation where you look at the, 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 looking at the factors that you can see, for example, your inefficiency levels, mm. looking how effective you do things, looking at how your, your performance. And that would measure how much, how, how sustainable you are. Mm -hmm. And it's not a matter of, um, yes, I'm making a profit, so yes, my business or my, my farm is sustainable. But it's a matter of looking at your, as I said, your, the various factors, looking at your production models and evaluating your process, that process. Mm -hmm. Yes, basically. So sustainable agriculture, as I said, is basically looking at three factors mm -hmm. and trying to see how um, effective that business, how, how um, efficient mm -hmm. your, that, that um, business is. Yeah, okay. So w what we're saying here is actual education for not only farmers, but persons associated with farming. Yes. That is, um, we probably are doing things. I always describe it when I teach um, chemistry. Um, Dominicans do not follow instructions well. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, many students know I've said that, so I can get away with it. Um, and what is? What, yeah, so what I, what I was getting to is that, to me, why make that statement? We know how to cook dashings and yams and bananas or, or fig. Huh? We don't follow a recipe, do we? We just cook because we saw our grandparents and our parents do it, right? Whereas in more developed countries, you see people go through reading um, instructions on how to do. Um, is that part, or would that be part of the education to farmers, etc.? That is, um, knowing how to do things and do things efficiently. Yes. Hmm. The, the thing is, at present, we've got a number of challenges affecting agriculture. Yes. Name it climate change, name it... Um, population you're looking at, there are a number of factors. And the question is, who educates mm. our farmers? Who educates persons involved in agriculture? Mm. And um, one of the various concerns that I personally, I, well, I have is that our models, our production functions are based on models of the 1970s. Mm -hmm. And um, it is basically, my, farmer, my father has a farm, Therefore, 
it's lend on to you know his to exactly so it is not a matter of for example where in other countries where persons who are educated in agriculture actually practice it mm -hmm. but it's a matter of where it's a lend on situation mm -hmm. and i believe that if we really want to as we said increase production increase levels of um, food and nutrition security mm -hmm. we have to change change the way we do things and one of the ways in changing is actually educating mm -hmm. and um, great authors in basically when they've, they've done the studies they've seen that educating persons in the production sector actually increase basically you, you increase your your outputs mm -hmm. you increase your efficiency in terms of the use of your inputs mm -hmm. and um, you also look at the way you do things mm -hmm. so these are various ways education is a way of actually you know creating change that is in, as I said in the, the, the production level but also the performance of your your business which is farming or maybe in you know other areas of agriculture okay um talifa i am smiling while listening to you because i think of someone who i know um in his own way is trying to educate farm, farmers from his lifelong experiences um hello uh, mr L louis of um the, the west coast <laughs> because you never know his address anything from um, Dubla to call you. He, he, he lays claim to those addresses. But Mr. Lee, and uh, I think there's a program on one of the radio stations, Q95, where some education in agriculture takes place. But here you are talking of something more scientific in terms of being able to measure um, how effective we are, uh, our productivity, and you made mention of inputs and outputs that are not just done in a haphazard way, but if measurable, then that would lead to greater efficiency. Yes. So um, we will um, come back to you, uh, Ms. Loda, because that is interesting. And, and why I'm smiling is because you're young, and then I'm making reference to an 80-year-old Mr. Louis, and he must be nodding his head and saying that, hey, there, there is something to be learned by this young lady. Um, etc. We'll speak a little more about this, but let's get back to Irma. Irma, I haven't forgotten, MS Project. Right. You need to tell us because I want to know and uh, the okay. listeners and viewers want to know. All right. Yes? Well, MS Project, well, obviously, MS stands for Microsoft Project. Mm -hmm. It's a tool that you use to, act to manage your project. The tool provides you with the ability to put in your schedule, you put in your resources, you also put in your costs. The way the tool works is that once you put in all of this information, mm. it guides you to understand whether or not your project is actually on track or not. So are you saying that there is software mm -hmm. for that? Yes. Okay, um, is that how to be purchased or can you download you can, it? You can purchase it. You, you can, can purchase the software mm -hmm. and go on, tell us then. You can purchase it, you can mm. go to the website Amazon or, or yes. Microsoft Project, mm. Microsoft's um, website okay. and, download, and purchase it or even there's also the free um, software that you can use mm. to download it. And the purpose of the tool is to assist project managers in actually effectively monitoring the project mm. and looking to see where things are falling behind and what they need to do to bring it up to speed. So there are several different type of reports within it. Mm. There's different calculations that are set up within it. And once you put in the information, the way that you need to put information, which is what the training would be mm. involved in showing yes. um, the students how you go about doing that, mm. you will see exactly how your project is running. Now, obviously, it can't read mine. What you put in is what you get out of it. Yes. So you have to understand what is the method used in terms of collecting the information required to actually input into this tool. Okay. So, so what, what you are in effect saying, there, there needs to be a level of competence on the use of computers. Yes. You know, in addition to the maps you described for mm -hmm. the schedule and cost management, but for the MS project, you have to be very competent in use of, of um, software, right. use of the computer, etc. I mean, the okay. trick of the trade for Microsoft mm. MS Project is mm. if you are very um, up to date on what 
Microsoft Excel is, yes. then you had to have no issues in using Project. Mm -hmm. Because to me, Project is just a glorified version of Excel. Oh, it's just a lot of different programming involved. Mm -hmm. It looks the way, it looks the same, and it reacts the same way. But it's just a lot of different programming involved at the back end. So oh. if you know how to use Excel very well and know know how to do macros, okay. Project is. And and, and you are saying also uh, in previous conversation that you can manage a class of twenty four. Yes. Okay. So there we are looking for twenty four keen students. You you will know. Uh, because we'll be publishing the results or informing you of the results and inviting you, those persons who top the, the, the class of um, 84 um, yes. students were in that class of semester two, which began in January and ended in April. We will be inviting some of you um, to be part of that. And there will always be another first semester in the subsequent years so others who have done. So we have established a pool, you may say, of project managers. Yes. You also have a job, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, but knowledge is not to oh, be, yeah. um, I mean, um, it needs to be if shared. I'm, if I'm out of a job, then I've done my, I've done my part in this Fantastic. Work, right? and, and that's one of the values of the University of the West Indies, shared value yes. um, for education. You know, no one can take it away from you, but you share it with yep. others, and hence the whole country develops. Oh, yes, definitely. For sustainable agriculture, Ms. Loda, what I'd like to know, what, what would be the content of the course? You said that sustainable agriculture has three main areas, which borders on ecological, social, and I can't remember the third one. Economic. Economic, okay, yes, the benefit. And you even made a bold statement that it can be more profitable than tourism, huh? because it deals with food security, and, and well, tourists must eat, don't they? Everyone must eat. <laughs> but tell us, what the content of the course? Uh, um, what sort of uh, um, aspects will people be educated on? Well, how to use pesticides or something like this? The or how be, not to? The course will be divided actually in four segments. Mm -hmm. The first segment will be basically on agroecology, that is understanding the, your, eco, e, well basically ecology, understanding mm. your system that you're working in. But what does ecology entail? Because when you use those fancy words there, uh, um, I'm not saying that the farmers don't understand but they, they, they would want to know better because they can relate to it by experience, but you are saying it probably more from the book end, they may say. But what is ecology about? Is it a balance of um, okay. flora and fauna and what have you? I don't know. Do you tell us? In very simple words, um, when you hear the words ecology or mm. agroecology, it's basically it's a system mm -hmm. that is basically that, 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 that is a system that is balanced off from biotic or abiotic factors, mm -hmm. which, is, which involves, for example... Um, Fungi, yes. algae. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. So you oh, have biotic. plants, you've got um, the, you know, um, water, you've got mm -hmm. the air, mm -hmm. you've got um, animals. All of these make up your system, mm -hmm. yes. So mm -hmm. when I make mention of your agroecology system, mm -hmm. I'm talking about... All of the, the, the all of the factors that is entailed within your farm, mm -hmm. within your, your mm -hmm. you call it your agribusiness yes. system. Okay. So on a simple note, what we're saying is that understanding what is agroecology is very important. Understand so that will lend on to the, the introduction of sustainable agriculture mm -hmm. and farming systems. Mm -hmm. um, that lends. Then we move on to uh, what we call climate change and sustainability. That there will lend a hand to understanding better plant nutrition, mm -hmm. understanding soil conservation models, understanding water management. Mm -hmm. Then there's, there's other, for example, there are other areas which will be very interesting. It is, for example, integrated pest management mm -hmm. is identifying a pest, understanding what is IPM, that is integrated pest management, then we go further as also looking at trying programming, understanding how to program, mm -hmm. design an IPM system. Mm -hmm. Then we move on to um, other areas that will be very interesting as food safety. Other areas that is involved in sustainable agriculture is um, business in agriculture. So this looking at sustainable business, business in agriculture, mm -hmm. that is, Maybe a farm, how sustainable can you 
can you create that system? Mm -hmm. um, then we look at models, different models and so forth, looking at there are other areas which involves, as I said, creating a business plan that mm -hmm. is, you know, sustainable mm -hmm. on that sense. We move on to other areas that we're looking at, uh, marketing, knowing how, how to you know, uh, please your customer, knowing what your customer wants, knowing to basically understand the economics of farming. And um, the last would be um, professional skills. That is communication. Mm -hmm. That is um, looking at effective leadership. There are other areas that look business etiquette so um yes i am a farmer yes i'm involved in agriculture but there's well, there, there are things that you need to know mm -hmm. that involves you know um, essentially several um, tools yes, that you yes, need to be yes. um, okua with to be a good sustainable Terrible business person involved business in agriculture person, etc and, and some of the things have an overlap um, with what um, yeah, so Irma, you spoke of, you know, um, the whole thing of planning, yeah. um, communication, yes, as you, you did mention, um, and um, managing a business, yeah. Yeah. Huh? managing a, a major project, mm -hmm. which a business which is. is. Yes. So um, I, I didn't realize a young person would have such wealth of knowledge, not of how to plant because most Dominicans will just drop a seed anywhere. Our soil is fertile and it grows and we eat. I mean, the mangoes are going uh, waste, citrus, etc. And who cares? But you are, you are talking about something of education in, 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 in um, agriculture, which will be beneficial to us and to make us much more productive in, in, in agriculture, um, enhance food security, which is for the benefit of all. Um, there is hope for Dominica with Miss Loda. Thank you. Now, um, in wrapping up, I'm going to give you all half a minute each uh, because remember we said it's in two parts. Right. And, and just what you said, Miss Loda, links into the second part, that is why birds matter. Uh, we will be talking about that. And there's uh, overlap there. So there's overlap in the two parts. Right. Your closing comments, uh, Miss Lee? Well, my closing comment is I'm hoping to see mm -hmm. my previous students hopefully um, sign up for cost and schedule management. So mm -hmm. hopefully I'll see you guys in September. Some of them, some because of them. remember, some may come from Mr. Vidal's right. class. We had two classes okay. of 40 mm -hmm. something um, with project management. So you'll see both groups. Right. Uh -huh. so, so you're looking forward to that. Yeah. And I can see the excitement in your face. <laughs> you can't wait for September to come to begin such a project. So sign up when we advertise those programs. Ms. Loda, your closing comments on sustainable agriculture. Is there hope for Dominica? Yes. And if Definitely. persons were to attend this program yes. or course at the University of West Indies, then that hope will be accentuated. Okay. Yes, tell us about we it. We have to connect sustainable agriculture with sustainable development. That is, you cannot subtract these two factors, these two um, terms. And I believe that persons participating in such a program will benefit from it and will lend a hand to economical development. Okay, and it is also for someone who have a back garden, um, a garden in the backyard, yes. but need to be educated on sustainable agriculture. It's not just for farmers, the way you um, picture farmers, those who go in the cold mountains and planting and dashing. Let's thank our two and we take a break for sponsors. I'm part of a tough, smart, constantly evolving, never too old to learn community of human beings. Proud of country. Proudly Caribbean, global citizens. With convenient access to over 400 learning programs delivered both online and face-to-face -face from the Caribbean's University of First Choice. My mind. My life. My world of possibilities is wide open. Call, click, or visit the UWI Open Campus. So, we are back. Um, this is the second part of your favorite program, the University of the West Indies and you. 
and uh, all things to be um, in, moving in synergy, one may say. We just spoke of two programs that we hope to introduce in semester one of the year 2014-2015 academic year at the University of the West Indies Open Campus um, involving um, aspects or you may say areas in project management which we had the introduction of last semester or this semester, semester two of the current year, academic year, and then we are going to look at cost and cost and schedule uh, management and to wrap up, link these two with MS project. But we spoke of sustainable agriculture. And the question I ask with my new guest, who will introduce himself in a minute, is why do birds matter? And of what value are they to Dominica and the world? Uh, welcome and can you kindly, sir, and introduce yourself? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, thank you, Felix. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, I well, you'll have to speak up, Nathan. I know you are uh, soft-spoken, but with wealth of information on birds. So you'll have to speak up. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Ethan Tamelis. I am a professor of biology and environmental studies at Amherst College in Massachusetts, the United States. Uh, I teach a variety of subjects, including ecology uh, and a lot of courses in environmental studies and introductory biology. Mm. And I'm here as a researcher studying the hummingbirds of Dominica. Hummingbirds and other birds, I, I would think. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is Nathan of Amherst College. Amherst is, is, I think, when I listened to your lecture at the University of West Indies, two two Thursdays ago, or mm -hmm. a, a week and a half ago, mm -hmm. you spoke of um, uh, Amherst being linked to one of the top uh, 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 universities in the uh, Oh, Am US. Amherst, Amherst is considered one of the top three small colleges in the United States. Yeah, one of the top yeah. three. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so in the realm of Harvard and um, mm -hmm. MIT and, and yes. UCLA. As an undergraduate college, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So, um, so you're very much like the University of the West Indies, yes. as it is to the Caribbean. Oh, yeah. Thank you, <laughs> Professor Ethan um, Temless. Um, what, why do birds matter? You, you, you lead. Well, I, I'll follow. Um, why birds matter is the theme of the uh, Birds Caribbean uh, Endemic Bird Festival uh, that's being held this past week throughout the Caribbean. And it's... Uh, society involving many people like me who are professors who work on birds and the theme for this year is why birds matter mm -hmm. what is the value of birds why should we care and I think the reason why birds matter is because they provide ecosystem services and ecosystem services is a fancy word but essentially what it means is that uh, these are services that organisms in our environment, the plants, the animals, the microbes, provide for us, and they benefit humans, hmm. right? And they benefit the environment, but we pay nothing for them. They're all done for free. Isn't so free this a services. great deal? You free know, services. it's a great deal. Look right. at what our environment is doing for us. And birds are part of that environment. And so what uh, Birds Caribbean wanted to do this year was try to educate people about what are the value of birds? What are some of the things that birds do that benefit uh, humans and our society and the environment? So can you give us some reasons why birds, and I, I would very much like, because I think you have brought along some slides mm -hmm. which will help our discourse. Um, why, why, why birds matter? Well, one, one reason why birds matter is uh, for pest control. Um, if you look at uh, all societies on our planet, uh, we are afflicted with a variety of pests, um, such as rats and mice. Uh, rats mm. and mice feed on agricultural grain, agricultural produce. Uh, they also can transmit diseases, a variety of kinds of diseases. And uh, on Dominica, there are three birds of prey uh, that feed on rats and mice. Uh, one of them is the barn owl, shown in this picture. Uh, I've seen it a couple of times driving around at night. 
Uh, another one is the Broadwing hawk or Malfini. It's the hawk on the Malfini. island. Malfini. I think yeah. people can relate to those Creole terms. Yeah. Malfini. Yes. It, it, it's uh, called a chicken hawk, but it really chicken feeds hawk. more on mice than anything else. Mm -hmm. And then another bird on the island that you'll see, uh, it's an actually increasing in abundance, is a small falcon called the American kestrel. All of those birds uh, feed on rodents and control rodent populations. So one, we have pest control as one. Right, um, right, why, right. Why birds matter, yes? Right, right. And, and just to show you a couple more uh, pest controls, yes. uh, let's look at mosquitoes and flies in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, you're looking at two other birds on the island. The I'm happy you said that because there is chicken gonia. I hope there are many more birds like that oh, yeah, to yeah. eat all those mosquitoes. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they, uh, you know, the black swift and the Caribbean yes. martin eat the mosquitoes and flies along Along with bats, a single individual can eat 500 to 1,000 insects per day. So if you think about not having those animals around, just imagine how uncomfortable we would be. Okay. And, and just um, to, to show you the value of these birds, if we didn't have uh, these birds around all right, to control the pests, we would have to use a lot more pesticides. pesticides. And the problem with that is it costs the farmer a lot more money. Mm. Uh, it puts a lot of pesticides out in the environment, which are dangerous for all of us. The more all pesticides health, yes, we yes. put out there, mm. the, the, the greater the health risk. Mm. And in addition, uh, it's been demonstrated time and time again that these pesticides can result in resistant pests. And okay. so you're, all you're doing yeah. is making the animals or the pests you're trying to destroy more resistant to what okay. you're applying. I, I think the point has been made. Um, people, you, you know that um, birds are useful in pest control, but he has several other reasons why bird matter. So we'll have to probably race a okay. little through okay. some of them. Okay. Um, which is not doing justice, um, Professor, but at least persons will get a basic idea. Okay, uh, another reason why birds matter has to do with um, spreading seeds. Yeah. If you look at uh, Dominica, Dominica is the nature island. Uh, I've surveyed all the islands in the Caribbean. Dominica has more rainforest, more elfin forest than any other island that's intact and preserved. Um, its trees are its life. Mm -hmm. uh, the birds are responsible for spreading those seeds around. And when you look at all the things that trees do for us, they provide us with shade, they prevent soil erosion, uh, they provide us with oxygen and all the air we breathe, it's the birds that actually do the planting of the seeds for us. And, uh, if you and in some ways sustain the forest. And sustain the forest. Mm -hmm. and, um, and in fact, uh, if you look at the seeds that fall from a tree, uh, they simply are not going to grow underneath the parent plant. And so what the birds do is they spread eat the it. fruit mm -hmm. and spread the seeds around so mm -hmm. that they find a place to grow. Um, again, when I talk about valuing the service provided by these birds, the U.S. government estimated that the cost that birds provide in terms of replanting the forest is about 5,000 EC per hectare. Oh. All right? Mm -hmm. So if you had to go out there and plant those seeds by hand, that's how much the it would cost. cost. It, yes. And that's what the birds are and doing. And we're getting that free. And we're from getting birds. it for free. We're not yes. paying a thing for them. Okay. Uh, it's all a service they provide for. Are there, are there other interesting. Oh, yes. yes? Uh, my favorite, uh, which is um, just advancing to my slides pollination. Yes. Uh, this, is, this is what I've been working on as a professor for over 20 years now. Um, it's, it's where my heart is. Uh, certainly, if you think about birds spreading seeds, a lot of the plants we wouldn't have were it not for the birds to pollinate them. Uh, plants can't move, mm -hmm. and so the birds move the pollen around. And there are about 9,000 species of birds on our planet. About 10% or 900 of them pollinate plants. Mm -hmm. uh, and roughly about 10% of the plant species in the world are pollinated by birds, but on Dominica, I would say uh, closer to 25% of wow. the plants because there are many fewer bee species here. So uh, the bird you're looking at is the bird I study, the purple-throated Carib hummingbird. Um, that has a, a tremendous association with the Balassier mm -hmm. on the island. Um, and all of these birds are responsible for pollinating the plant. Um, even the national flower of Dominica mm -hmm. is pollinated. And I, I like you, the, the name of this bird um, is the, the, the Fufu. Oh, the Fufu, <laughs> yeah. It's almost, Fu means crazy oh. in our dialect. Oh. But anyway. Yeah, yeah, the <laughs> fufu. Um, yes, uh, the, the national flower of Dominica yes. is pollinated by 
hummingbirds. hummingbirds and yeah. again, if you did not have these birds around to pollinate these flowers, you wouldn't have these plants. And um, this is not a biologist like me just mm. preaching and saying, yes. oh, you have to worry about the birds, we have to value the birds. Sadly, again and again, studies are finding where bird species are going extinct, mm -hmm. you lose the plants too. Oh, so okay. the two are very intimately connected. You take one away, the other goes as well. Oh. And, and on Dominica, I think that's very true of the environment because there's such a, a long-term association between the hummingbirds that you see here, like the blue-headed hummingbird that's mm -hmm. up uh, at Freshwater Lake, or the- Is, is that a rare species, um, this one? It's, it's, it occurs only on Dominica and Martinique. Wow. And high elevations. Mm. It's not a very common hummingbird, although if you are somebody who studies them like me, you know where to find them. But it's absolutely a magnificent creature, as you see here. Mm. And again, um, these animals uh, have developed on this island for thousands of years with these plants, and vice versa. Mm. And if you take the birds away, you're going to lose the vegetation, the, the vegetation. of Domin Dominica, okay. and what makes Dominica Dominica. And I think I understood from your lecture there are how many different species of hummingbirds in the world? 300? Uh, 330 species of hummingbirds species in of the hummingbirds. world. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do birds beyond pollinating and spreading seeds, etc.? Any other thing that's um, of interest? Oh, yes. Uh, if you look at birds, I think one of the most important things for Dominica, if I just get to my computer and, and show you some other slides, um, one of them, well, I don't have a, uh, yes, I do. You're, you're uh, almost doing something like an MS project uh, that was described uh, yes, earlier. I, I, obviously, I need a project <laughs> manager here. Um, probably one of the most important things for, for Dominica is that uh, birds are um, a major hobby the world over. Um, and, and we don't tend to think about that, but in the United States and Britain, birds, in terms of dollars spent, are one of the top three hobbies. So if you think of people playing football, people mm -hmm. playing cricket, no, you know, in, in many parts of the world, people spend more money to watch birds. In the United States, $36 billion was spent by people in the United States just to watch birds wow. in the year 2000. Within the United States, $36 Within, billion. And, and, and I, I found another source that said the average cost of a bird watching trip to the Caribbean is about $4,000 US. Wow. So the point is people want to spend money to watch birds. It's a win-win uh, situation for countries that have birds to preserve mm. them because people will pay to watch them. Mm. And, and again and again, I've seen people flying to Dominica or flying around the world to see species of birds and they're willing to uh, pay money to watch them. And certainly if you look at Dominica, Dominica is one of these places that has um, uh, retains more of its birds than many other islands in the Caribbean. And, and I can honestly say it's one of the reasons why I enjoy working here. Okay, so bird watching and promotion of ecotourism. Right. Fantastic. Right. Um, I think I understood from Irma Lee, although she's a project manager, mm -hmm. that there's something happening at Grand Bay where some unusual birds have migrated from the north mm -hmm. and found um, a home in, in, in Dominica. Mm -hmm. So some sort of bit of nursery or what have you is being prepared there to um, sustain those birds in, in the south. But, but um, Grand Bay is noted for culture mm -hmm. and, and they will preserve that. Yeah, so um, ecotourism, any, anything else that why birds matter? Um, yes, I, I, I don't have it on my computer, yes. but um, there are other reasons why birds matter. Um, think about food. Food, um, yes. And we're talking about sustainable agriculture. Yes. Uh, certainly, if we look at birds, um, all of us eat chicken, or, ah. or you know, <laughs> unless you're a vegetarian. And chickens were domesticated from a wild bird in Southeast Asia around 3000 BC. Um, they provide us with meat, they provide us with eggs, they provide us with manure, that is fertilizer. Mm. But uh, one of the most important things if you're looking at sustainable agriculture is the cost of animal feed and feeding animals. And it turns out that you only need two pounds of, of animal feed to make a pound of chicken. Mm. You need five pounds of feed to make a pound of pork mm. and eight pounds of feed to make a pound of beef. Mm -hmm. What this means in the long run is that if you're a farmer, you can produce more chicken mm -hmm. uh, for the same amount of feed. You can sell that 
meat for a lower cost to the consumer. We can buy chicken less expensively. And everybody benefits. And not surprisingly, um, in the United States and in Brazil, a lot of meat-eating countries now that used to be famous for eating beef, chicken is now the number one number meat one. concern. Okay. Simply because we can grow it so and here much we, more. Here we're not only talking of KFC, yeah. but um, we, we have, I understood, an abattoir being built in Dominica with one of the, the, the things to produce our own meat, particularly I've chicken. I've seen it. Yes. yes. Uh, yes. I wish them well. Yeah. Um, Right? We all love chicken and fish, but we do eat, consume a lot mm -hmm. of chicken. Mm -hmm. In a small population, true, as Dominica, 70,000, right. right. but even in the States, if we can produce our own chicken, then less money goes out. Mm -hmm. So it's an economic benefit. Yes? Um, are there any other things that, um, why birds matter to us? Oh, yeah, uh, certainly. If you look at um, birds, um, birds matter from a cultural standpoint. Culture, um, yes. And this mm. is something that I talked about uh, the uh, last week uh, mm. in, in my talk. Um, I like showing this picture because it's a painting mm. by a French artist uh, back in the 1850s. And if you look, you can see the purple-throated Carib hummingbird in the left part of that painting. That's the uh, big black hummingbird that occurs on Dominica. Mm. And, and I always love going back through volumes uh, from 17 and 1800 and seeing these paintings and realizing that there were people seeing these animals. Mm. And they didn't have cameras, but they painted them. And so- And they appear very large. And, 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 and yes, and, and it's a connection back to history. And I think that gets embraced in the culture of Dominica. Uh, um, one of the things I delight in about this island is, is the flag, because I work on birds. Yes. And so what, what more could I love than a, than a flag that, that has, has a bird, has a bird <laughs> yes. on it? But if you look at the imperial uh, parrot, um, it, it stands for reaching new heights and having aspirations. And um, the stars stand for hope as well as the parishes of Dominica mm. and, and the cross stands for uh, religious faith. Mm. But I, I love the colors in here and was reading about them and mm. you have the yellow that stands for the sun and the citrus Cit and banana, mm -hmm. the black that stands for the earth and the people, people. Mm -hmm. the white that stands for the water and the green that stands for the forest. Fox, yes. and, and to me, as someone from a foreign country, as a guest in Dominica, when I look at this flag and I compare it to flags around the world, this country, nature, is this country. It's on your flag. It's, it's, it's part of the culture, okay. and it's, I've never seen that on, on well, many well, other flags. Can I give world. you a little tidbit yeah. quickly? The person who designed this flag is um, Alwyn Bully, uh, now an honorary doctor mm -hmm. of the University mm -hmm. of the West Indies, um, Dr. Alwyn Bully, who is an artist, who was an English teacher. In fact, he taught me English. I hope I, I speak it well mm -hmm. um, from his <laughs> tutoring. Um, as well as he worked for UNESCO. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so when he came up with that design, which was accepted because there was a competition, that he's a very humble chap. Um, he will not go boasting that I did the flag, but really all credit has to be given to him. And he has, tied it, as you rightly said, with what our culture and nature is. He was once the head of the cultural division in Dominica. So that is to add to um, birds as part of our culture and the value. Um, let us then, if you don't mind, move now to the other part. You said why birds matter and what value are they to Dominica or to the world, yes. Yeah, uh, mm. well, we, we've talked about why birds matter and mm. the value they are to the world. And, and the, the point that Birds Caribbean is making is if you were to lose these birds, think of all the costs that you would have to bear yourself. Mm. Think of what would happen if you uh, had to pollinate all your coffee trees by hand, yeah. right? How are you gonna do that? You can't do that. Uh, think of the number of pests you would have if you didn't have birds around to eat them. Um, how are you going to plant trees if, uh, you know... The seeds are not dispersed yeah. by birds. So, yes. so all of these things are the value of birds. And what ecologists have tried to emphasize to the public is that, look, we have birds doing these things for us, other animals, plants benefit us as well, 
they don't receive any money for these services, but uh, yet they're of extraordinary value mm -hmm. to all of us. And um, just to give you an idea, there, there were environmental uh, economists who have tried to uh, estimate the cost of ecosystem services of all the animals and plants in the world mm -hmm. and how much it would cost to duplicate those services. If we as if humans we were to do it. The, the if, dollar if value ranges from four trillion to fifty trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. the, the, the average figure, the, the figure that most people generally agree on is somewhere in the twenty to thirty trillion dollar range. Mm -hmm. When this paper was published, that was equal to the gross domestic product of the entire world. So basically, you're talking about the entire world economy to replicate these sorts of services. And we take them for granted um, and don't appreciate them. Yeah. Pro Professor, we, you spoke of birds and culture. And I am thinking, I, I think I posed that question to you in your lecture uh, a few, um, well, a week and a half ago, where as I told you, the culture of Dominica, as a young man, I hunted birds with slingshots. Um, some of the more affluent friends had pellets. Mm -hmm. We do not see that anymore. And there was no education not to do. I think young persons have other interests. Um, they don't go into the forest or into the bushes. They don't send traps for doves and so on anymore. Um, and that probably has helped the population of birds in Dominica beyond what is destroyed by natural hurricanes, etc. But um, it has been a good change to mm -hmm. move from using slingshots and other things to kill birds. And by not doing that, we are, as you say, benefiting from the presence of the birds in Dominica. Certainly, mm. certainly. And with everybody having iPhones and all of this, now they can take photographs of birds. Birds, okay. All right, yes. so instead of using a slingshot, you take your photo. Photograph. <laughs> yes, you hunt them with a and, camera. And then you're not doing right. any harm to the birds. No, no yes, no, yes. No, no. Okay, that, that is interesting. Um, are there any other things that you would like to discuss with us, Re? Um, sure, birds? sure. Mm -hmm. um, what, one of the things that um, I think is important, and, and I've tried to emphasize that that wasn't so much in Birds Caribbean's um, value of birds is how can we pay them back? Right? How can we pay them? How back? can we pay them back? And and um, I, I I put together these pictures, especially with Dominicans in mind, and so when. I look at Dominica uh, and the Caribbean in general on these islands. I've been studying the Balisier uh, or, mm. or Heliconia. Yes. And on Dominica, uh, this is a plant that is central to the rainforest. It provides the nectar for the hummingbirds. The fruits provide food for fruit-eating birds. Uh, and then uh, the plants themselves have a lot of insects that insect-eating birds feed on. Unfortunately, um, there's a tendency to treat this plant as a weed and mm -hmm. cut it down along roads, cut it down along farm edges. And when you do that, you lose all the birds. And as I said, um, when you consider the value of ecotourism to the economy and that people want to watch birds, um, it distresses me because the easiest place to find birds is to go out to the rainforest and find a big patch of heliconia or the balisier here Balisier's. and you're going to see the birds okay. uh, and, and you take that down and, and they're gone. Second, what can you do to encourage birds to be around your farm or around your yard? And I've argued uh, for planting native plants and mm -hmm. bird friendly plants. Um, just to educate Dominicans, on the, the left part of this picture, I mm. have... Uh, so these are different species of balisier. Uh, a balisier, yes. yes. Mm. And on the left, you have um, uh, Heliconia Baha'i, or balisier, that occurs up at the high elevations in Freshwater mm. Lake and, and Mount Diablatan. Um, in the middle, you have two color phases, red and yellow, of Heliconia carabea. Mm. That occurs in the lowlands all over the island. These are native to Dominica, and they have very much developed with the hummingbirds and are part of the interaction that I've been studying for 16 years. It's an amazing one. On the right, what you see the far right there, yes. is mm -hmm. a non-native heliconia or balisier called Heliconia wagneriana. That has escaped from gardens. And unfortunately, as a result of disturbance and cutting down the native heliconia, 
this non-native is replacing mm -hmm. uh, the native heliconia, and it reproduces not by hummingbirds. It's capable of self-fertilizing its flowers, and it's spreading everywhere, especially along the north part of the island on the North uh, Coast Road, as well as through the Central Island Road. Um, that's disturbing because it's taking over and replacing your native plants and yes. your native heliconia. So, so it's not native to Dominica, it was brought in? Brought in in gardens oh, and then okay. it escaped and it's gone mm. all over. So it's a mixture there of some red and yellow, whereas you are showing that there are distinctive red ones mm -hmm. which are on the left, more on the highlands, mm -hmm. by the freshwater lake and, and in, the, in the forest, whereas the yellow ones are more low line land, mm -hmm. but are they linked to males and females? Um, uh, it, what, 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 attracted what, what attracted me mm -hmm. was in my, my own research. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if, you, if you look at uh, the big black hummingbird on the island, which is the purple-throated carib, um, which is what I've been studying now for uh, 16 years, shown here, mm -hmm. Yes. This is an amazing species because the males have a very short straight bill, mm -hmm. the female has a very long curved bill, and what we found is that the males are the pollinator of the lowland heliconia, mm -hmm. which has short straight flowers, and the females are the pollinator of the striped heliconia that you see up at high elevations, um, shown right here, okay. uh, this one right there on yes. the left. Yeah. And, and it's a tremendous story because the, the bills of these birds are really adapted for, or the sexes are adapted mm -hmm. for feeding at these two uh, heliconia plants. And it's a unique story in the world. Um, it's something that I and uh, the team of researchers who have worked with me have been able to figure out and map. Uh, the BBC filmed us a few years ago to document this story. Nature PBS from the United States was here. It's been repeated in BBC News and ABC News and throughout the world um, as part of an exhibit at the Smithsonian National Museum in the United States. This is unique to the Caribbean. It's unique yes. to the Lesser Antilles, and Dominica in particular has more of it than anywhere else, and it's a great story. And what's troubling is to see these non-native plants taking out your native heliconia and other plants as well. Oh, okay, so you are asking everyone to guard against this non-native heliconia which is a uh, variegated yellow and red yes. um, um, species. Pink and, um, pink and, pink, yeah. pink and, and, and yellow. yellow. Um, this is what we get rid of, mm -hmm. but we plant in our gardens the red and the distinctive right. um, um, yellow. How interesting that is. Yeah. Um, I do not know how much to complement your work and that of others. I think you had a colleague with you. John Cress. Uh, John Cress. Um, and um, while we bask in the sunshine here in Roseau and in Portsmouth and other villages. There you are in the cold mountains uh, um, doing that sort of research which is beneficial to Dominica and to particularly our young people or students. So closing words from you. Um, it's uh, of all the islands I've worked on in the Caribbean the people of Dominica are absolutely wonderful. They embrace nature. Uh, you're saying it. that because no, you, no, you're I, on the program of no, the University no, 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 no. of the West Indies. No, no, no. Uh, what, what I enjoy, uh, just today I yes. was up at Freshwater Lake and a man saw us working and came up and start, said, can I, can I, do you have time to talk? And I told him what we were doing and we had a nice conversation. Oh, um, again and again, well, people will see me working and they'll ask, what are you doing? And, and then we end up talking. And, that's actually lovely because there are a lot of places I work where you don't get that. But okay. on Dominica, there are a lot of people who. We are friend, friendly people, and uh, you're you're right. I, I can confirm. And this, my dear friends, has been the very interesting program of the University of Western Indies and you. Thank you for viewing and listening. Thank you. <laughs> okay.